my last round of questions is going to be, and we'll start back with the Harvey again. Um, where do you see video game development in Austin going? What do you think the future is going to be like? Oh, that's always such a risky question. Um, you know, it, many people have tried to predict the future, and many people have been wrong. But, um, you know, uh, Austin has always had this, um, I guess since the early days of Origin, where people, uh, like, you know, as young players, people like me and Raph were totally drawn to what those guys were doing. Such deep worlds, such, uh, such a consistent, believable environment, you know. It was very groundbreaking. Ultima Online was, was, was hugely groundbreaking here. Uh, good games come out every five or seven years, I, I would say, in most cycles, like uh, the Metroid Prime games, Darksiders. You know, every now and then there's a game that everybody just pays attention to. In the background, there's always something running, like Wizard 101, uh, some of our... Our lead programmer's wife actually works with your company and loves it and uh, talks about it all the time, you know. But so it, it, it's a vibrant environment. But from my perspective, um, the whole industry is going through kind of a, a bunch of different sea changes. You know, we're seeing uh, many new types of players than the traditional, what you perceive as a traditional video game player. Uh, it's much more of a cultural experience, a social experience now. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's also, you know, uh, the the billing model changes, you know, like how uh, how you pay for video games or if you pay for them at all. There's also the platforms, playing games more and more on our phones. Um, you know, the iPad Mini is gorgeous. The the iPad is gorgeous. What what's the next generation of that going to look like? Uh, small teams can make games currently for those devices. And and again, I'd be remiss if I didn't say Austin has one of the strongest indie game developer uh, movements uh, in, in the world. Like if you look at Brandon Boyer here, and all the people, like we mentioned Adam Saltzman earlier, his uh, his game Hundreds came out a couple of days ago. Uh, the White Whale guys are here. There's just a ton. Tiger Styles here. There's a ton of cool companies. Um, and they have a very vibrant community. Um, so for the future, you know, we're about to move into a next heavy console cycle. Um, Steam Box is coming, so the PC is not going anywhere. MMOs aren't going anywhere. Um, more and more things, more and more games are going to move on to mobile devices or, or tablets. Um, more and more people are going to try to blend the billing models uh, that exist for uh, currently that the MMO space has innovated on for many years, especially in, in Asia. Uh, they're going to try to blend those with the kinds of games we all make, I think. Um, so it's, um, that's, I guess that's an overview of what I see. Okay, thanks. Rep. Uh, I, I do think that Austin is, uh, is in great shape, like, uh, better than ever, in fact, because um, uh, if you look at the type of games that are developed here, like this like here, at least there's a good panel of like great diversity, and that's, that's already the, the key for a, a good uh, city to, make, to be making games. It's also a city that is cheaper to develop games here than, you know, say, LA or, um, uh, I mean, all the West Coast, which is also a, an attractive uh, thing. Uh, and uh, I would say, you know, when I when I moved here in Austin, that was about eight years ago. One thing that was shocking to me was that uh, Austin did not quite had made this the step to the to the next gen, like the the art, like from, from the art style. You know, there was like, okay, it was still like very old school art being here, and it was kind of scary. And uh, it's not anymore. You know, there's uh, there's been a lot of games now that have actually made the that giant step of being like really pretty and and uh, on par with anything that is being made on the west coast, and so all these are, are really really good signs. Um, so as far as you know the the future and the kind of games like it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter. Like we hear people saying, oh the single player AAA games are dead. Everything is going to move on tablets and micro payments. It's like uh, you know there's going to be every kind of games and. Uh, I'd be very surprised that you know this single player uh, <laughs> experience on a couch with my huge TV is going to disappear anytime soon. I mean, I don't see that happen. There will be maybe you know those games are going to be highly competitive and very expensive to produce, and a lot of people are going to break their teeth on that. But it doesn't mean they're going to go away, and that there's no market for them anymore. Uh, so no, I'm very enthusiastic for for Austin in general. Thank you, uh, Max. It's been really interesting watching, you know, coming back to Austin and watching the games industry over the past six years. We've been in really turbulent times. And, you know, while I know that that's been really difficult, I hope I don't say anything that offends anyone. 
um, you know, there's also some there's also some good that comes from that. You know, there's sort of only the strong survive to a certain extent. And you know, coming back here as a bit of an observer of Austin originally, and you know, now clearly much more entrenched in the Austin game development world, it's clear to me that there are a lot of companies that uh, you know needed to needed a bit of a wake-up call and needed to change their business models, needed to change leadership, needed to change their people, needed to, as you're saying, Raf, to kind of move into the next generation graphically and those sorts of things. And I think that while it's been a really, really difficult you know, past few years, I think that in the long run, Austin is actually stronger for it. And I think that game development in Austin is stronger for it. Um, in terms of you know, forward-looking and you know, where things go, you know, I, I can't say for certain. I think that that trend is going to continue. It's a, you know, it is a difficult business. It is a hit-driven business, and you know, it's not easy. And you know, I, I do see some of this trend with Austin. You know, at the business people in Austin getting stronger. Um, I see that trend, you know, continuing in the future. But I really think, you know, rather than predict the future for me, just a little bit of wishful thinking. You know, I really hope that Austin has homegrown success stories. And I think you know there's a few of them at this table, and you know, super super proud of everyone here. And I think that that's ultimately what is going to make Austin successful as a you know game development hub. That's what's going to make Austin you know continue to be a mecca for game developers that want to be here. You know, and homegrown success stories kind of mean two things. Um, one is you know great games that originate in Austin. Um, absolutely, no question about it. Um, Beyond that, though, I think there's also a lot of value in homegrown companies. You know, companies that are based in Austin. Um, I think that those, you know, these companies put back into the local economy. They're more likely to hire locally, work with local partners to support, you know, the growth of local people. So, um, hope. I don't know if that trend will continue. I certainly hope that it will. I think it'll be good for Austin if it does. Thank you, uh, Todd. Yeah, so um, when I when I think about the Austin industry just growing, like how how games will grow here, it to me it comes down to you kind of need three three components, right? You need people with money, you know, rich uncles who are willing to put money into companies. You need uh, you need a, a stock of great people to build your teams. We've got that, so that that's already covered. And you need new leaders to emerge. You need people who are willing to say, I'm going to go put those other two together. And here's the pitch, here's the vision, and I'm going to try and roll something up. And then, like you were basically alluding to, you've got now dozens and dozens of these. Not all of them will make it, but some of them will. And that, that's kind of that evolutionary algorithm that leads to new independent studios that one day have 12 people and then the next day have 300. So I think we're seeing that right now. And, and a lot of what's driving that is that we're not all chasing exactly the same customer and exactly the same player and exactly the same dollar. I mean, I, I love what we do. I think it's really cool. I also think it's really cool that fast forward five or 10 years and my players are going to be all players, you know, and we, we get a lot of moms that play. I mean, I, you know, Zynga got a lot of attention for getting out in front of everything and, and, and building this giant um, base of players very, very quickly. Uh, but I, I think Harvey's right. I don't think that that means that the people are, it might have, it might have been you. I'm sorry, Rap. <laughs> we kind of won. Yeah, so I think Harvey took your idea. I don't want to make any. Uh, so, but but I, th I think you're right. I don't see that the the gamer who right now really loves to play PC games or really loves to play console games has gone away. It's just that this other market came and it was so giant and so big that all of a sudden the idea that if you were still serving this group over here, well, you were a dinosaur. Well, that that's not true at all. I mean, that's still a very vibrant market that people can be incredibly successful going after that group. So the market growing. Uh, is just helpful to everybody if we can get those and, and because the more market grows the more that's going to cause rich uncles to come and be willing to invest in the new visionaries who are going to then hire the teams yeah I, I think to that point games as a as a human activity have nowhere near maxed out like we hear this every few years if you've been if you've been in games a long time first it was like well, live action video is going to kill everybody else. And then it was this type of game, and out social games. And it's not a zero sum game. There, there, are, it, it, there are more and more and more players and types of players. Uh, when I came out to Austin, I was originally attracted to it because of the, the, the movie scene. You know, Alamo Draft House, the cool stuff going on there. South by Southwest. There was just a lot of cool stuff in the area, and this was really the only place I was looking besides the West Coast, you know, there's there's not a lot of options for someplace that's cool, and it's got a, a vibrant development scene. And at the time, it was very focused on MMOs, and I think that in some ways was bad because it, it really focused the development talent on MMOs, and when you tried to build anything else, you really had to recruit from 
California and those kind of areas. And I think since then, it's really diversified a lot more where there's a lot more AAA console talent. There's mobile, casual, uh, that's making it a lot more feasible to start any kind of studio here. Thank you, Ryan? Yeah, I think similar to, <clears throat> excuse me, similar to what Colin said, when I first got here eight or nine years ago, my perception of Austin was that it was very MMO heavy, and that's scary because MMOs are huge teams. When MMOs don't succeed, that's a lot of people suddenly thrown out into a quickly saturated market looking for jobs. And what's really been exciting for me in the time that I've been here is seeing the diversity grow and seeing companies of very disparate types formed, as these guys were saying, everything from indie studios to much larger homegrown studios. I mean, at one, you know, there are big studios here that started here. But even now, we're seeing some of the bigger publishers who are taking notice, and they're also putting up shop here, whether it's EA, BioWare. And what I think what's key is diversity, so we can reach that critical mass to the point where Austin's gaming community and the development community is self-sustaining. Because when I first got here, there were periods where it started to wax and wane, and I was concerned that maybe Austin wasn't going to become like the cities on the West Coast, California, Seattle, and the Bellevue area, where there are a lot of developers, that it was going to be just a flash in the pan and then maybe disappear if a few key companies folded. But I think we're at that point now where we have enough, just look at the roster of high quality games that are up here and uh, studios that aren't present now that are making good games. We're at the point now where we can sustain big hits and keep going. We are a real development city and we're only, I mean, you can count on one or two hands the number of cities that would, would fit that criteria. So it's exciting. Thank you. Damien? Um, I, I'm going to say that what I expect is uh, no change. And by that, I mean what most of us are thinking about in terms of is this going to change in, in, in our near future, which is to say this boom and bust cycle that hit inside of 2012 and has hit every year, every other year for the past decade. No, it's not going to change. Uh, Austin is a place where people try to do big things. It's a place where we try to make big games, and this is not to knock all of the indie guys out there, but you know, people have been trying to do big, significant games here and hire uh, teams that are very large to do them uh, for years and years and years. And we now have um, a base of talent here that when one of these studios fails or trips over itself or whatnot, there's a whole bunch of other people around going, oh, hey, hey, Bob's free. Why don't you come on over here? Uh, so this is, you know, this is... Good and bad, obviously, but you know, to much to what uh, the other panelists said, it really speaks to hey, sometimes the weak have to get cold inside of a creative environment, inside of a uh, creative field like video games. That's going to happen, but the jobs aren't going to go away; they're just going to shift. Hey, EA is back, right? Remember when EA got out of town when when they shut down Origins? Like, oh, screw Austin, we're never doing that again. Yeah, they're back. They're not just at Bioware; they're all, they've also you know, got EA Sports there, they've got Pogo there. There is a lot going back on because the talent is here. Um, and so I don't expect that to change. What I hope is that one of the things about the industry right now is because the games are content heavy, and again, I might be skewed, there is a lot of hire a whole bunch of people to finish the game, uh, and then you have to kind of let them go because you staffed up too much in order to make that final push. Um, I am hopeful that we stop fooling ourselves and say, hey, that's just bad management, and start realizing, hey, that's how games have to happen inside of you know, these pipelines and these game designs that are so content heavy, and actually try to figure out business practices that make that better. If you think about it, Hollywood, uh, and I'm certain that the critical mass folks uh, would be more than happy to tell you more about this. Uh, Hollywood works in this model where they build companies that pretty much exist for the life of one movie, and then all those people go out and they find new jobs. We're not there yet, but for a lot of the people who build content, that's what it feels like. And if we do a better job at handling that sort of reality of the industry, <laughs> then I think a lot more people will feel like uh, video games can be a stable career. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.